Welcome into Outkick the Show. A joyous day across the land. I'm coming to you early because so many people have no idea what the Supreme Court decision in sports gambling means today. So we're going to have a special Outkick the Show just devoted to the legality of sports gambling. The Supreme Court decision that came down today. I read it. Uh, I wrote about it. I'm trying to simplify it for everybody out there who understands it. And I hope that you guys are having spectacular Monday mornings. This was a major seismic day in the world of sports, in the world of gambling, in the world of sports media. Not the kind of guy to toot my own horn. Not the kind of guy to say, look at me. Hey everybody, I was right. I'm a genius. Everything that I told you was going to happen is going to happen. After all, there's no I in clay. Uh, Just really, I'm a humble guy. Not trying to draw attention to myself. But, I was fucking right. I was fucking right again. It's amazing how often one man talking into a periscope at a Facebook Live camera can be right. But we begin, as always, by telling you that if you're going to gamble tonight on uh, a spectacular uh, uh, game beginning the Western Conference Finals aka the actual NBA Finals beginning tonight make sure you go to my friends at sportsbookreview.com and find the best possible number on tonight's game if you're gambling in the NBA if you're gambling in the NHL if you're going into sports gambling at all ironically of all celebrate today by gambling go to sportsbookreview.com Dot com. All right. Uh, I will answer a lot of your questions. I will run through. No, oh, had to burp there. I will run through the decision, what it means in the long range. I also want to tell you, big news also on this timing, and I thought it might happen. We officially announced the Outkick Sports Gambling and Media Conference, which is going to turn into a big thing. I hope it is officially beginning this year at August. 23rd, 24th, and 25th, and 26th in Vegas at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. I'm telling you right now, make sure you go sign up. I don't know how many rooms we're going to have left after this week. Probably not very many. It's going to be awesome. A lot of people out there that you like. If you like um, uh, people who come on my show regularly, if you like me, It's going to be a limited number of people. We're going to hang out. It's going to be awesome. Uh, It will be fabulous. Go right now. You can check out my Twitter feed. I tweeted it out. The weekend in Vegas. We have packages starting under $500. Two nights, three nights lodging. You get access to all of our events going all the way up to two grand. Uh, Starting at, I think, $490 and going all the way up to two grand. For two grand, you get a suite at the Hard Rock. And you get the opportunity to come hang out with me. Special Thursday night meal with a special guest that is going to make everybody's panties drop. I'll just tell you that right now. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but you have to trust me. A limited number of you are going to get to go out for a steak dinner, drinks, and I'm going to have a special guest in addition to me that is going to blow your mind. All right? If you live in Vegas, somebody just said, I live in Vegas, can I come? Yes, we also have tickets available without needing a hotel room. All of that at OutKick.com. If you go to the gear page, just scroll in and you can be glad that you did it. All right, now let's talk about the decision that came out today. So I hope to see a lot of you in Las Vegas at the end of August for the first annual OutKick Sports Media and Gambling Conference, uh, which we're officially announcing today. Go out there. Go check it out. You can buy tickets. If you don't need a hotel room, you can buy tickets only. We have a limited number of hotel rooms available. Okay. Uh, Here's what it means. All right. Supreme Court decision today came down. In December, I came on here and I told you that I'd gone to listen to the arguments. I said, based on the questions that we were getting, um, that there was going to be a good setup there. By the way, also, go to my friend Ryan Kelly. Check out thehomeloanexpert.com anywhere in the country. Maybe you want to save some money so you can gamble more now that it's going to be legal all over the country. Go to thehomeloanexpert.com. He'll hook you up, get you the best possible mortgage rates just in time for spring, for the summer home buying season. Go to thehomeloanexpert.com. Okay, Uh, here's what we need to know. 
seven to two, six to three decision. After I went in December, I told you based on the questions that I thought New Jersey was going to win their case. And let me start at a broad level. What does this mean on the broadest possible level? Right now, the only state you can go into and bet on individual sports games as well as buy future tickets is Nevada. Anywhere in the state of Nevada now, they've been working on this for a while, you can get an app on your phone and be able to wager in-game. You can wager just like you were in the casino. You can jump around in price. I think Nevada is going to be the uh, the sort of the canary in the coal mine that many states are going to follow. There are 13 additional states that currently have bills pending in their legislature to allow sports gambling to happen. Okay, uh, among them, a variety of different jurisdictions: Mississippi, West Virginia, New York. New Jersey is now legal. Uh, Pennsylvania. All over the country, sports gambling bills are pending. What this decision did before the Supreme Court is it said. There was a 1992 law called PASPA, the Prohibition on Sports Gambling Act that was passed by Bill Bradley, then the sponsoring uh, Senator Bill Bradley, Dollar Bill Bradley, former NBA player. And so as a result, he believed that max fixing was a big issue and everything else. So they passed this law in 1992. At the time that it was passed in 1992, George Bush Sr. was still... The, uh, was still the president. And this bill, the Bush Justice Department said we have severe questions about whether or not this bill is actually constitutional. And in particular, those questions sur- surrounded this. Why should the federal government be able to take away from the state governments the opportunity to decide whether their citizens should have the right to gamble on sports? And so, as a result... New Jersey, under Chris Christie, eventually decided to challenge this law. And they allowed a referendum to take place. All of the people in New Jersey could vote and they voted by a 60% margin that they wanted to allow sports gambling to take place. But PASPA shot it down. It's been pending in the courts up until the Supreme Court agreed to take this case. And in the decision, ultimately, is a lot of uh, legal complexities. But what I will say in a broad sense, because most people not watching this show right now are not lawyers, what I would say in a broad sense is this, okay? What really happened was the majority of the Supreme Court said that under principles of federalism, states should have the right to make this decision themselves and the federal government should not come in and say, you cannot allow sports gambling to take place. That's it on its most basic level. So... Under federalism, for those of you who are not experts on constitutional law, which I'm guessing is the vast majority of you, succinctly stated, essentially what we have is if the Constitution does not give the power to the federal government specifically, then the states retain the power as laboratories. And this is where I'm a believer in federalism. I believe that individual states should be democracies for laboratories for democracy. And that was the idea of the Founding Fathers, was that each of the individual states should have the opportunity to try out different methods and rules and laws and as a result be used as a laboratory that other states could follow and say, oh wow, this works really well. Now, the federal government certainly has preemption rights, but looking at this case, the Supreme Court justices said This is a right that should remain with the states and this PASPA law uh, is not permissible under the Constitution. So, what's going to happen? That's a very basic, broad decision of what was made. It was a 7-2 decision in parts, a 6-3 decision in other parts. The people who dissented, Justice Kagan, Justice Sotomayor, uh, uh, sorry, Justice Kagan and Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, they dissented along with Breyer in part primarily based on federalism grounds. So this was and is a battle in the Supreme Court right now over whether or not sports gambling should be allowed. It's really a battle over states' rights. So the Supreme Court, by a 6-3 to three margin, 7-2 to two margin in parts, allowed for that to happen. The only two justices who were completely against it were Ruth Bader Ginsburg and uh, Kagan two of the most liberal justices who want as much federal power as possible, okay? So, what does this mean? 
A lot of you say, okay, that's the law, Clay. I don't understand that at all. This federalism, this constitutionality, like all this stuff. You're just saying, what is the practical impact here? Get me to the real stuff. What does this mean? All right, what it means on a basic level is that many of you are going to be able, I believe, to gamble on football by this fall inside of your state legally. Now, the question that will emerge rapidly is this. What will the law actually look like in all of these individual states? Let me take a step back and tell you this. 44 states right now allow a lottery. Every state allows alcohol in some way, but every state's alcohol laws are different. For instance, where I live in Tennessee, we just got wine in grocery stores. For a long time, you had to buy wine and liquor in separate stores. Sounds crazy, but everybody out there has got a different state rule about when your places can start to sell beer. For instance, I was down in Texas going to an A&M game driving in for that 11 a.m. kickoff between A&M and LSU, and you can't buy beer early on Saturday mornings in Texas until like 10 a.m. or 9 a.m. or whatever the hell it is, okay? Um, there are a lot of different restrictions about beer. What quality, what like, you know, amount of beer can you have in it? All these different rules, it's why there's all these individual distributorships because every state has different rules about exactly how you can buy beer, wine, or liquor, right? That's the best example, I believe, of what will end up happening now that sports gambling is in place, okay? Every individual state is going to have its own different laws that will be in place about exactly how sports uh, gambling will take place. Some states will be more liberal than others. Here's what I would say right now. You'll be amazed by how many legislators and members of the political universe will end up watching this or reading my article on OutKick. Here's what I would say if you want my advice. You guys absolutely positively have to allow sports gambling to take place on phones. Because if you do not, your average younger person out there, somebody who is 45 or 50 or younger, is not going to get into a car and drive to a place to stand in line to place a sports bet when they can otherwise pull out their phone, pull up one of multiple apps, and place a wager. Moreover, if in-game live wagering is popular, which it insanely is, you're not going to have time at halftime to get in your car, drive all the way to a physical facility, and place an in-person wager you need to have the ability to wager on your phone, okay? And that needs to be legal. It needs to be regulated. You need to be able to trust that if you win, you get your money, and you need to be able to understand how the process plays itself out. You cannot allow this to be passed and then only allow people to bet physically in person. You need to consider not just where the market is, but where the market is going. You should be able to be sitting at a game Wherever you are in the country, whether you're at an SEC football game, an NFL game, the NBA Finals, Hockey Stanley Cup, the NCAA Tournament, you should be able to pull out your phone and place a legal wager on sports, period. Okay, That is my suggestion and requirement if I were involved in trying to get this legislated everywhere. The other thing I would say... now. I'm not opposed if you need somebody to put actual cash into an account. I totally understand that. Because some people are going to say, oh, gambling is going to be, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an opportunity for people to lose lots of money. Well, you could physically require them to make the deposit. You could physically require them to make the deposit. Personally, I would require, allow credit cards. Because unlike your bookie, once you don't have money left on your credit card, you can't keep gambling. So for people out there who say, well, what about problem gamblers? My response would be, problem gamblers can only lose as much credit as they've got. Lots of bookies out there will give you way more credit than you can possibly handle, and you end up losing a lot more. Your credit card company will not allow you to have as much possible rope as you need. Okay, So I think, in general, there are several things that need to happen. One... Online sports gambling has to be a reality. Everybody has to be able to do it from their phone. Two, you need to make sure that it's trustworthy, accurate, and reliable. What I would do, people say, okay, Clay, what if you were in charge? What if you were made gambling czar for the country? What I would do is create a stock market for gambling. 
And what I mean by that is, just like you can buy and sell stock, every single person should be able to place their own wager on a dynamic market. You see somebody who wants to take a team minus six and a half, you hop in and you get it minus six and a half so that you're not setting up a, so that you're having an actual trade. And what I would do is set up a low VIG because you don't really need that much VIG on the internet. You have a company that's in charge of storing this. Yes, and there are some companies trying to do this. You have a company that's in charge of storing this. On top of it, what I would also create is I would create a uh, market where futures tickets are constantly available on the stock market. For instance, if you were fortunate enough to buy the Las Vegas uh, Golden Knights in the NHL at 300 to 1, instead of having to hold that ticket and either get a 300 to 1 payout or nothing, you should be able to sell your futures ticket at an agreed upon price on the stock market at that point in time. Instead of trying to hedge or anything else, that price should have a value. So 300 to 1 Las Vegas Golden Knights tickets have a value on the stock market that is perpetual. So right now you might be able to get them for 15 to 1. And you can take the money in between that you unlocked in a value as part of being able to sell that. Does that make sense to you? Uh, so does that make sense to you guys? That would be, I think, the most phenomenal way to unlock true market potential here uh, and be able to have a real-time dynamic line set based on buying and selling so that 50%, just like the stock market, because right now you don't have an even market. I believe in markets. And so I would want a stock market set up and each individual state could do this, by the way, each individual state could set up their own sports gambling stock market. Now, it would be more reliable the larger it was. But then you, within that state, I would say this also, the bigs would be incredibly low. I could also see where you buy in and it's almost like an Amazon Prime. You know how you pay $100 a year and you get Amazon Prime or you pay $10 a month and you get Netflix? I can see a gambling subscription service that would allow you to be then having access to the marketplace. Does this make sense to you guys? So, instead of having to pay a VIG where the casinos are able to make a ton of money off of you, I could see the state taking a, a prescription and saying almost like a fishing license. You know, you're supposed to buy a fishing license if you're going to go out. You buy a gambling license in a state and for that gambling license, you then don't have to pay VIGs. So the state gets their money up front. Let's say you have to pay 100 bucks for your yearly license. The state makes all the money based on the licensing, right? So let's say there are a million people in my state of Tennessee. You pay $100 for the year, which allows you to gamble as much as you want. And in exchange, the state gets $100 million that they can put towards whatever they want. It's the simplest possible way to organize it now. The only complicating factor becomes then when you go to different states, how do you set that up? And that's why, honestly, it would probably make sense if you had a national platform where everybody can use it anywhere in the country. So if, for, for example, if I go to watch a game down in Atlanta, I don't get blocked out of being able to go in my account and place my bet because I'm in a different state. Because then that's where you get into the hodgepodge of different rules. That, to me, it should be like alcohol. I understand that if I go to uh, if I go to Atlanta and I drive from Nashville, the rules of alcohol are different in the state of Georgia. But it's not like I can't get alcohol there, right? And the same thing is true, for instance, with lotteries and everything else. That's my kind of put on a genius hat and figure out how this should work nationwide. Now, a lot of people say, "Well, how does the how do the leagues work with this?" The leagues, to me, are going to make their money by selling advertising. And that's where billions of dollars are going to come rolling in. If I were right now running a team, what I would be focused on is I want to sell to William Hill or I want to sell to whatever co Caesars. Whatever company is out there that's going to be trying to go after the sports gambling market, I want to be on their logo. And I want, if I'm the NBA, I want to sell an official gambling sponsorship like I sell an official, official beer. Or like I sell an official uh, an official uh, NFL cleat, you know, like Nike or Reebok or all these companies, and you get that money up front, which would be worth billions of dollars, and then every single 
individual team also has the right to have their own local deal predicated on what local gambling laws are and what local gambling companies are big in their respective markets. So I would be trying to think about putting a logo on a, uh, on a jersey. And by the way, this is not revolutionary stuff if you've been studying this and paying attention to it for a while. I think that if you really kind of contemplate it in a larger scale, I took a picture of this the other day. This is just a random EPL game. And I'm not even sure which EPL team this was. But, you know, they have the banners behind them. Like, I've got Sportsbook Review behind me. They have the banners behind these uh, these English Premier League teams. Look at this. Over half, I don't know how well you can see this, over half of the sponsors doing this interview are gambling companies. Australia and Europe have already allowed this. I think that, uh, that, it's, that it's a no-brainer. That's how I think they make all of their money. And I would imagine that a lot of these European companies and a lot of the Australian companies and everybody else are going to be coming trying to roll into the American market. And uh, I think it's going to be fabulous. I think this is fabulous for the average fan. People out there are like, oh, what about your picks? Like, motherfucker. I gamble for fun. All right? My picks were 49% last year. The three previous years, we made money on it. But if you are out there putting all of your money into gambling as opposed to just buying fucking Spider 500 funds and just rolling with the 500 biggest companies in America, you're crazy, okay? I gamble for fun. Everybody should gamble for fun. You should always respect the picks, but you should be gambling for fun. The blood bank guarantee, I gamble, all right? I love to gamble because it makes sports more fun. Not because I think that in real life, I'm going to become a billionaire from sports gambling making individual picks. Now, I'm going to make a lot of money off sports gambling now being legal based on our audience and my ability to bring that awesome offers and everything else to you guys. But what the vast majority of people understand is if you are trying to gamble to make money in sports, then you need to find another profession. The reason why people gamble on sports is to make sports more fun. It's the same reason why people drink alcohol at the bar. Sports gambling to me is like alcohol at the bar. Yeah, you can go to the bar and you can stand around and not have a beer. But do you know what? I have more fun when I drink at the bar. I have more fun when I have alcohol. Okay? I'm not getting a return on my investment with the alcohol. Unless there's girls there. And they're more likely to hang out with me if I buy them drinks. That's a return on the investment. But by and large, you're just drinking for fun. That's the truth with gambling too. And just like with alcohol, some people have problems with it. But you can't legislate the country or the world based on some people having problems. As I've long said on my own shows, you can't stop crazy. You can't stop crazy. And if you start, if you start legislating to try to stop crazy then eventually nobody can do anything. Because there's always a crazy dude, and it's always, almost always a crazy dude out there who can't handle the responsibility. Most of us can occasionally eat fast food and not die of a heart attack. Some people are unable to avoid eating, and they turn into fat, unbelievably huge tubs of lards. That's not my fault. If I, that's called fat shaming, then shame away. Eat less and you'll weigh less. If you're losing money gambling, gamble less. If you don't enjoy it, don't do it. I'm a libertarian. If you want to smoke pot, do it. If you want to gamble on sports, do it. If you want to drink beer to excess, do it as long as you use Uber and you don't drive afterwards. It's not my responsibility to babysit your loser asses. Do what makes you happy as an individual, provided it's legal. And I think we should all make it Legal. That's why people say, like, oh, Clay Travis is so concerned. No, I'm just a liberal, libertarian, radical moderate, right in the middle, make decisions that make you happy. We have the right to life, liberty, and a pursuit of happiness. You know what makes me happier? Pursuing a goddamn cover. Pursuing a cover makes me happier. Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, and trying to cover in a football game. It makes me happy. All right? We all make choices. Make better choices and your life is better. Make worse choices and your life is worse. But it's not my job to tell you what choices to make. I can try to give you the info. There's lots of info out there about what the smart decisions are, but that's it. All right. Uh, 
What questions do you guys have about the sports gambling case? I will now take any of your questions. I think I've answered a lot of them, but what questions? I believe it's a good question. How does this impact Disney, ESPN? You can also add Fox, NBC, everybody. I think it makes sports uh, sports content infinitely more valuable because I think the amount of money that's going to pour into sports television to try to convince you to sign up for another product is going to be similar to the amount of money that comes in from cars or insurance companies or food companies or beverage companies. Everybody's going to try to be convincing you that you should be using their service. And there is going to be try, somebody's going to try to be the Coke and Pepsi and Mountain Dew and Sprite of sports gambling. Just like we've all got Toyota and, uh, and Chrysler and GM and Ford all trying to sell you cars. I believe the advertising market, and the best example of this is the amount of money that rolled into Daily Fantasy. Daily Fantasy was just the tip sports gambling. All right? Daily Fantasy guys at FanDuel and DraftKings. They're like, oh, we're not real gambling. We're just putting the tip in. Oh, look, the tip of our penis is just in, but this is not real sex. Oh, no, no, we're just, it's just the tip sex. That's what they were doing. The entire purpose of FanDuel and DraftKings was to get everybody's content for who was paying, playing daily fantasy and then be able to flip the switch when sports gambling actually became legal and say, oh, guess what, guys? Now you can fuck. Now it's not just the tip anymore. Now you can put the whole dick in. All right? Sports gambling, when you look at it, was inevitable in terms of the direction of the trajectory of the country. But whether uh, Daily Fantasy with uh, DraftKings and FanDuel were going to last or not was a question of whether or not sports gambling would become legal fast enough. Now they all deny it. They're like, no, we're not a gambling company. We're a Daily Fantasy company. Get the fuck out of here. They were just the tip into sports gambling. They found a loophole that daily fantasy was allowed and they figured that everybody who was doing daily fantasy is now going to do sports gambling. Because daily fantasy is just the tip sex. It sucks compared to regular gambling, right? Nobody out there is like, you know what? I don't like gambling, but I love making up fake teams so that I can try to win daily fantasy football and basketball contests. You know that's not true. The reason why those companies existed was for when sports gambling would actually become legal. And now they'll be going head-to-head with the Caesars of the world, the MGMs of the world, all these different companies which are going to be trying to reach into as many of your wallets as possible. Now, it's a good question. What about the offshores? Well, that gets into what happens stateside. Okay, Some of these states, they're they're not going to listen to me and they're going to require you to go to a physical location to place a sports wager. I think that's not going to be popular. No guy I know who has an ability to make a wager on his phone is going to be willing to walk downstairs or get in his car and drive to a physical location. I'll tell you this right now. When I'm in Vegas, I have these apps on my phone and I will wager, rather than actually go into the sports book, I place the wagers on my phone. It takes two minutes to go through and place the wager. Why would I stand in line at the NCAA tournament for hours sometimes in order to place bets physically. If you do not allow people to bet from their phones, then they will continue to bet from their phones by any means necessary. Now, it might expand the pie, but I don't necessarily believe that most people are going to be smart enough to understand this. Every individual state has to allow gambling online or via phone, or they're just going to incentivize people to continue to do offshore wagering. That's the truth. So I don't know if they will actually allow it. Um, Again, the money's going to roll in. Uh, Questions. Questions out there uh, about this. I'll answer a few more of your questions. I'm coming early today because of this major story that came out. Um, The sports leagues, again, I think they're going to make their money. I don't think they're going to get a share. Yes, that's a great question. Will you be able to bet through apps? One of the reasons that I love Twitter is I think what the sports leagues will eventually do is sign exclusive deals with individual companies and let's say the NBA is going to be brought to you by X and in live games, you'll be able to click on a button on Twitter and it'll take you right to place a bet. Do you like tonight Houston Rockets plus uh, plus one and a half or Golden State minus one and a half? I like Golden State minus one and a half. I'll be able to click on a button 
10 minutes before that game goes. At halftime, I'll be able to click on a button and go wager. I think this is going to be a massive business. I think it's going to be massive business direct response through social media. I think it will be huge. How will this affect player contracts? Has to do with uh, revenue. Has to do with revenue. Who knows what uh, what the actual uh, players get a share of revenue. Um, so all of that, I think, uh, will be a lots to determine. But I think, at a minimum, probably eight to ten of you, eight to ten states by football season, and maybe more, will allow you to wager inside of the borders of those states. I think that's going to happen. The other thing and why we need like a kind of a national law in some way or everybody in different states to agree is think about how crazy it's going to be if you just drive, like I'm going down to Florida this weekend to the beach house. There's no way that I'm going to have a Tennessee license to gamble and not, de- and not be able to gamble with, with, uh, because I'm in Florida. Like because I drove across a couple of states, Alabama and Florida, I think what we really need is national gambling laws to allow national products, right? And so I think that's going to be a big part of the debate that's out there is how do you nationally set up a system so that if I'm in uh, Texas or I'm in New York or I'm in California or I'm in Washington State that I am able to do my own bidding, right? I understand you have to be subject to the laws of the states and I'm a federalism proponent but in something like this, I'm in favor of there being one law like everybody can wave in and say, okay, we'll allow Tennessee people to do this in Florida. We'll allow, you know, that, that kind of situation. Yes, like Powerball for gambling, much like with the state lottery, we have all these states that have come together and agreed, you know what, we can make more money if we have bigger prizes. I think that individual states should be able to enter into agreements and then allow you all to bind together So if you sign up, if I sign up, for instance, I want to be able to make sure that I can gamble in every state where gambling is legal. That's the difference. Um, That's what I think should happen eventually. Because if it doesn't, then the offshores are still going to get a lot of your money. Because the offshore rule is the same no matter where in the world you are, right? I can log into an offshore company anywhere in the world and that law and those lines are going to be the exact same. So I think it makes sense for there to be a model law to make sense that other states would sign on to to allow you to be able to gamble in reciprocity in different states no matter where you end up. Um, All right, Uh, what reason would a state have to not legalize it? It'll be the same arguments that you always hear. Oh, somebody's going to end up addicted to gambling. Think of the children. Uh, But again, there are 44 states that allow a lottery. I don't reasonably foresee any legitimate argument that can be made in any state that allows you to buy a lottery ticket, I don't understand how you could reasonably argue that you shouldn't be able to gamble on sports. And I've made this argument before, but listen to this. NFL teams are already licensing their logos to lotteries. In Nashville, in Tennessee where I live, the Tennessee Titans uh, give their logo to scratch off lottery tickets. You could walk into a gas station and not legally bet on whether or not the Titans are going to cover but you can buy a scratch-off lottery ticket that actually has the Titans logo on it, right? That's ludicrous. So I think the 44 states that allow allow lottery gambling are going to have a really difficult time not allowing this. And certainly for casino gambling, like down in Mississippi, they're going to say, wait a minute, we got to have sports sports, uh, books in the Mississippi casinos. Um, But uh, but that whole thing is, I, I think there won't be very much. Um, all sports in Texas have college and pro sports lotto tickets. Of course they do. Because, again, people who gamble on sports are also likely to gamble on other things. This is not crazy. Um, And yes, there are some examples of states not having lotteries because the casinos want all the money. For instance, I don't think Nevada has uh, has lotteries. I don't think Mississippi has lotteries. Uh, But those states will definitely have, Nevada already does, the sports book, I think it's certainly the case that Mississippi will have a sports book as well. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Um, Vegas impact. Good question. I don't think Vegas will be that impacted. I don't think there are that many people in the grand scheme of things who go to Vegas solely to gamble on sports and would not go to Vegas otherwise. I think for most people, sports gambling in Vegas is an attribute that makes it more fun 
but I don't think they go entirely to gamble on sports. So I don't think it'll actually impact Vegas that much. I really don't. If anything, it'll just make the sports books have to work harder to provide a better experience. I, I don't think there like, there are there some people who do that. Yes, I think that's a small number because I think if you're such a big gambler in sports, first of all, Vegas is a long trip for a lot of people unless you're in LA or something. I just don't buy into it being that many people who drive in. Um, and uh, sports is just an activity there. Uh, all right, we're speaking of that. We're going to be in Vegas in August. Come to our first annual sports media and gambling conference. It's going to be phenomenal. You will love it. You can get in for as low as four ninety. That includes your hotel room and that includes your tickets to the event. You can spend as much as two grand. That includes a dinner on Thursday night with me. Limited number of people that will be there. Small number and a special VIP guest who I can't even name, but I guarantee you will blow your mind. All right, all of that is going to happen. I love all of you. Hopefully the show made you a little bit smarter. Go to sportsbookreview.com for all your gambling and informational related needs on the lines and go to thehomeloanexpert.com. Get hooked up now with the best possible mortgage anywhere you go in the country. DBAP boys and girls, I am Clay Travis. God bless America. God bless the Supreme Court. And God bless sports gambling. This has been OutKick, the coverage.